Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss aspartame. So if you recall, aspartame is a synthetic sweetener and it is just slightly sweeter than your natural sweetener. So it has a relative sweetness of 200. So it's definitely sweeter than our glucose, fructose, and sucrose. Now it is comprised of two main components and they are aspartic acid and phenylalanine. Okay, and so the phenylalanine is going to come back. But the most important thing that I want to put right here is that it is 100% safe. So a big confession that I have here is that I am a big, big, big Diet Coke fan. I drink way too much Diet Coke. I don't drink much alcohol. I don't drink any coffee at all, but this is definitely a problem for me. It is definitely a weakness. And there's a lot of aspartame in Diet Coke. So as a chemist and someone who drinks this a lot, people are always, always asking me, aren't you afraid of the aspartame? Aren't you scared of this? And I'm like, no, I'm not scared of it. It's 100% safe. There's a huge, huge rumor that aspartame causes cancer in humans. That's just that's not true. The first thing that you need to know is that if it does ever cause cancer, it causes cancer in rats in an organ that humans don't even have. So whenever you hear that saying, oh, it causes cancer, you just go, nah, -uh, and then drop some knowledge on them and let people know aspartame is 100% safe. Unless there is a little <laughs> piece to this. Unless, and this is a huge thing, unless you have a disease and this disease is called phenyl Okay, ketonuria, phenylketonuria. And so people that have this disease are usually, they refer to themselves as phenylketonurics. Okay, so if you ever hear somebody say that, that's what it means. And if you look at the very, very back of this label, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but right at the very, very bottom in big, bold letters, it says phenylketonurics contains phenylalanine. So it's this huge, huge, huge warning right there on the back because if you have this disease, you absolutely cannot ingest aspartame at, at all. The reason being is that people that have this disease right here do not have the enzymes that convert our phenylalanine into, so enzymes, and this converts into what's called tyrosine. So now most humans, this process can happen easily inside your body, not a big issue. If you have the disease, you do not have this enzyme right here that can convert your phenylalanine into tyrosine, so you cannot do this. So what happens is if you ingest all this aspartame in there, you end up ingesting your phenylalanine, and so you all of a sudden start building up a phenylalanine inside your system. Well, if you have too much of this, it causes severe, severe, mental retardation. Big problem. Okay, big, big problem. Could you imagine how bad that would be if you started drinking Diet Coke and all of a sudden your brain just stopped working? I mean, that would be absolutely terrible. So what they do is you test every single baby, at least here in the United States, we test the urine of every single baby that is born, at least that's done in a hospital, to make sure that babies do not have this disease. And you can easily test it with a litmus test using urine, okay? But as soon as they find out that someone has a disease, that the babies have these disease, they're put on a very, very, very strict diet so that they can avoid the mental retardation, which is kind of cool that we know the science that way, but also it's kind of freaky that that could possibly happen just by drinking a delicious, wonderful Diet Coke. All right, so here's my question for you. I'm going to draw out phenylalanine. I'm going to draw this for you. Okay, so there's a carbon here in the center, and there's these things on the outside, and hopefully you can see what these things are, okay? So this is an H2N. We're going to talk about what that functional group is in the future, so don't worry about that yet. But what I really want you to do is try to remember what this functional group is called. And so what happens here is it's the carbon is connected to a CH2, and then that carbon, or that methylene, I should say, is then connected to a benzene ring, okay? So it looks something like this. So what I want you to do is try to tell me right here, that group, what is the name of that functional group? Okay, of C-O-O-H.
All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. We've reviewed this a couple different times, but anytime you see that COOH, you should definitely be thinking, oh, I know what that is. That is a carboxylic acid. All right, so make sure anytime you see that, you know that you have that structure where your R is bonded to a carbon, it's doubly bonded to an oxygen, and that carbon is attached to another O uh, or an oxygen, which is attached to a hydrogen or an OH group. Remember, your OH group is just called an alcohol. All right, so these functional groups are going to keep coming back. You need to know what these names are. It's not okay to let go of them and forget about them. And I'm actually going to give you a little preview because we're about to move into proteins here. This is called an amine group. A-M-I-N-E. Okay. An amine. So we're going to talk about that in the future. But otherwise, take care of yourself. Have a fantastic week and drink aspartame.